Okay, this is a follow-up to my video the other day uh, where I was talking about uh, microchannel systems and compatibility with um, sound uh, games and applications written for Sound Blaster um, and the issue around the uh, interrupts. Um, so I was just going to show off or try to explain better uh, uh, what's, ha what's happening. So if I go into this uh, SBDiag program that's... Uh, it's, it comes with the snark barker. Uh, it's in the repository, and I go to the um, uh, check DSP interrupts, and I hit it. This now goes in a loop, just testing the interrupts over and over. Now I have um, I have a logic analyzer um, hooked up here, um, so um, if I go, uh, I've got it set to trigger on the rising edge of the IRQ. Now that's kind of the internal view of the IRQ on the card, so that's why it's a uh, it's uh, asserted high and not low. So if I capture a bit of this, you'll see that what happens is the 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 interrupt line goes high and then there's a read to port IO port 22E and uh, during that read is when it um, the interrupt line comes back down. Um, now if you if you look at the uh, the schematic for the uh, snark barker um, Basically, that is um, there's so there's the uh, the uh, I request out from the DSP um, on uh, on this uh, on this pin, and it uh, it just goes into this uh, flip flop here. So uh, it, this flip flop gets set by I re a pulse from I request, quick pulse, and then it and then it holds this IRQ in. Um, um, asserted now that's actually IRQ in is actually to the, the CPLD so that's actually the IRQ out to the host uh, and then it gets cleared by this RD DAV which is the read to port uh, 22E or 24E or 26E um, and you can see like this is the um, the source code of the um, Sound Blaster DSP and you can see like the I request it's always just a pulse to the DSP it's just a quick pulse uh, and it gets latched uh, at this uh, flip flop, and this flip flop gets cleared uh, when there's a read to um, to uh, port uh, two four, sorry two two e or two four e. Now, uh, what happens on um, on the systems that don't don't properly handle this? Now, if we go in here and we modify SP Diag. Uh, for example, and I let's say I remove that DSP read. Um, so I'm going to remove the DSP read. So this is the interrupt handler. It's now not going to do that uh, read to DSP read status, which is a uh, 22E. Um, so now if we um, let's uh, let's uh, start the logic analyzer again, and that's that's. Uh, Let's go in. Let's do the interrupt test again, and now you'll see it's uh, it's just kind of it's it's hung, and if we look, you can see that the the interrupt line went high, but there was never a read. Um, so basically, what happens on a micro on a microchannel system, as soon as that handler exited, it was it was called again. It just keeps getting called and called and called. Um, and then it'll eventually it'll, it'll crash or stack yeah so so that's it so this is is toasted and that's that's what happens so I'm gonna reboot the system into the uh, reference disk um, so just give me one second and I'll, I'll jump to that uh, loading up here um, so RQ5 so I'm gonna change this to TSR reboot the system and I'll, I'll jump to that now okay now if we were to go into um, SB Diag again um, and it's still I still have it broken but now if I go in and I go to uh, check DSP it's now working just fine and what we'll see I actually have another signal here I'm going to enable called the uh, TSR signal um, 
and and what that signal is, um, if we go start and we'll capture this, uh, what we'll see is that the interrupt line goes pi, then there's a read to port 22E, um, and that's my TSR. And the way I know it's my TSR is that then immediately after it, I then also send a signal to another pin um, just so I can differentiate them. And, and then you'll see that just happens over and over again. Now, if we go in, for example, um, and we fix um, uh, FB Diag and, and set it back so that it properly clears the interrupt uh, flip-flop. So this, save, compile. Um, what we'll see now is uh, zero uh, DSP check. Uh, what we see is the interrupt goes high, and then it gets, and then there's a read. Now this read is being done by the IS, by the interrupt handler of SB Diag, and then this one is I'm now doing it again in my TSR because I don't know for sure whether the other handler did it or not. So to keep the system from crashing, I just read it to be sure. And again, I know it was uh, that was me because this uh, following um, pulse here. So if we, for example, uh, take a look at this in Doom, if we go to games and we go to Doom, um, let me just start that. Um, uh, so what we'll see is that uh, if we just go to the gameplay, you will see that what happens is that the interrupt goes high and then Doom's uh, handler, uh, interrupt handler, actually does the read and clears it correctly. And then you see that I'm down down here uh, a little bit later. I also clear it. Um, and I know I cleared it because of this pulse. So this is all, this is not necessary. The reason that Doom crashes is if you look at the start of Doom when it does its detection uh, for the sound blaster, what you'll see here is that interrupt level goes high, and then I'm the one that clears it. It, it didn't get cleared by Doom's handler. I had to clear it, and then Doom just kind of randomly clears it, uh, you know, 36 microseconds later. And this is just something they, their, detec their initial detection is, they do like a single DMA transfer, uh, like one byte, as some kind of test, and then they do it again there. So, without my TSR, as soon as it exited here, this would the the interrupt would not have dropped, so then it would just kept getting called in a, in a loop forever. So, so yeah, that's that's the issue with Doom. Um, probably any any game that shares that same library, I guess DMX li any library, it has that same kind of um, uh, initialization routine where they don't immediately clear the interrupt. That will crash for sure. Uh, and then any other case where they're not clearing it. So uh, that's where I'm at. Um, I'll continue to play around with this and, and test it on other systems. And I'm also going to do some experimentation to see um, uh, why um, AdLib is so slow. So I have some additional signals here, uh, uh, CD, CH ready, and uh, I have some some uh, FM lines from the the... Yamaha to see when it's getting red and I'm gonna just look at the timing of that stuff and just Try to get my head around what's happening and why it's uh, Not working on some systems. It's obviously the Yamaha is just too slow uh, I think that's what it is, but uh, I Just want to kind of see it with my own eyes to try to understand it better um, That's that's all I've got for now uh, That's it